A young boy who idolized the creepypasta character, Jeff the Killer, wanted to be like him someday. Eventually, he incorporated Jeff into being a core component of his identity, and in turn, he acted out his fantasies in a similar manner. Creepypasta stories may be nothing more than a laughable internet cliché at this point, but ten years ago they were pretty big. Plenty of teens and children got a pretty good spook out of them. Today's case, though, transcends mere interest and moves into the more obsessive territory. Donovan A. Nicholas was a young boy when his father, Shane, decided it was time to find a new woman. The two had been living together out in a small home far out in the country in Urbana, Ohio for a while now. Donovan was told that he was going to have a new mother figure in his life, a woman named Heidi Faye Taylor. Heidi was in her 20s when she met Donovan. By now, she already had two kids of her own, Todd and Alyssa. In the beginning, the family got along very well. Todd especially had a lot of fun with Donovan. It was fun. Me, Donovan, we'd go ride in the woods and just do stupid teenage things, and it was never a dull moment. Heidi's friend, Angie, said that the kids were great. Usually. Heidi was a little ordinary thing. She was no bigger in a minute. She pushed her children for excellence. And Alyssa was always very smart academically. And so was Donovan. I mean, he did great in school up until the last year or so. By 2016, Heidi's two kids had gotten older and moved out of the house. This left the now 13-year-old Donovan as the only kid left in the home with his father and the woman he called his mom. Donovan, a student at Graham Middle School, had been a fairly normal kid up until this point. However, he slowly began to change. He started acting out, talking back, and behaving badly in general. It's probably just puberty, his family thought. They didn't realize how bad things had truly gotten. I said Donovan was a catered child. As in, he got just about everything he wanted. And uh, he did not like to be told no. And I think that he got a burst of real anger in puberty. Our emotions are heightened. And, uh, and I think he just got mad because he wasn't getting his own way. Donovan was pretty active in the creepypasta scene online back in 2017. At 14 years old, he was particularly interested in a character called Jeff the Killer. At this point, I'm sure most of you out there at least know the gist of what this character is about, and I have no doubt you've seen his face, but I'll explain a little about him just in case. In the original story, Jeff was an angsty teenager who was often bullied. Ultimately, the bullies set him on fire, and he was left disfigured. His mother caught him carving a smile into his face with a knife, as he said he no longer had the energy to do so himself. He then burned off his own eyelids, so he would always see his own face. Then, he murdered his mother and went on a killing spree, dubbing himself Jeff the Killer. Nowadays, Jeff the Killer is often regarded as one of the worst written creepypastas of all time. It's basically an angsty, teenage, power-slash-revenge fantasy, and it's not very subtle at all. Regardless, the story is nevertheless iconic, more so the image associated with it. Donovan, while talking with his friends, expressed an interest in being Jeff the Killer himself. In some text, his friend would joke about becoming a mass murderer and how he would go about it. Donovan, mainly listening, only chimed in with, I would be Jeff the Killer. He had come to romanticize the idea of being some sort of spurned, anti-hero type killer character. Donovan had gotten a girlfriend at his young age, albeit online. The two had been talking for quite some time. Being hormonal teenagers, the talks often got spicy. However, things crossed the line when the two started sending nudes to each other. Heidi herself ended up coming across this on Donovan's phone. She was appalled, to say the least. Having this kind of material on his phone, consensual or not, was highly illegal after all. Heidi took Donovan's phone away and forbid him from talking to this girl. She told him that she would be informing his father, Shane, when he got home. Donovan was infuriated. She had just taken his girlfriend away from him, he thought. In addition, he was also humiliated. After all, the woman he called his mom had just seen his horny banter with his long-distance girlfriend and even his nudes. 
Although things were definitely awkward, Heidi continued about her day as usual. Donovan, however, was doing no such thing. He was plotting revenge, and if he was going to get revenge, he wanted to do it in style like his favorite internet creepypasta character. Donovan put on an all-black outfit from his shirt to his pants to his shoes. He went into the kitchen and grabbed what he called a medium-sized knife. He then went into the bathroom and, using a needle, cut a smile into his cheeks in the same fashion as the iconic photo of Jeff the Killer. He waited down at the bottom of the stairs, hiding just around the corner, waiting for his mom to come down. When she didn't come down on her own, he instead called her name. She came down the stairs without much thought. This was when Donovan grabbed her from behind. He hugged her tightly for a moment before he pulled out his knife. He began his attack, stabbing Heidi 60 times all over her body as she attempted to fight back. The scene erupted into chaos as Donovan swung the knife and Heidi begged for her life. At some point during the attack, Donovan ended up cutting himself on the leg with his knife. As Heidi lay on the ground, begging for her life, asking him to please call 911, Donovan calmly slipped away to get a glass of water. This was when Heidi, somehow in her condition, stood up and ran up the stairs to get her phone. In her weak state, it wasn't difficult for Donovan to outrun her and get there before she did. He pulled his father's 9mm handgun from the nightstand. He struggled to load it, taking a few tries to succeed. When he did, he aimed it at Heidi and shot her once in the head. Donovan sat for a moment before grabbing the phone and heading back downstairs to the kitchen. He called 911 himself, leading to a very bizarre phone call that left the 911 operator fairly confused. Immediately, he confessed to killing his mother, before quickly changing his story and blaming it all on Jeff. I just killed my mother. And what happened, sir? I, I just killed my mother, and I need to go to the hospital. And what happened? It wasn't me who, who, it wasn't me who killed her, it was Jeff. Likely realizing that the operator was confused at his admission of guilt and sudden recantation, he attempted to elaborate on the situation. What happened? Who did it? Jeff, yeah, I'm sorry, this is going to be really hard to explain, but I kind of have another person inside me. Like, <laughs> okay, are you, are you okay? Uh, no, I stabbed myself. You stabbed yourself? Yes. Uh, I, what, I, I, what happened I, to your mom? He killed her. She snapped. <laughs> All right, are you able to say who's with you? I, I am by myself, me and Jeff. <laughs> Okay, and, and what happened to your mom? What did you do? He, he, he stabbed her. Then he shot her. Donovan realized he needed to explain his backstory a little more clearly, elaborating on how the Jeff character works. But I swear it wasn't me. It was, uh, it was Jeff. Jeff is inside me. Jeff is inside you? Yes. Okay. He he sometimes takes he sometimes takes control, and I've no I've no control over him. The operator asked Donovan why he, or rather Jeff, did this in the first place, causing Donovan to go on telling a rant about how Jeff felt, accusing Heidi of all sorts of things. Why, why did you hurt your mom, or why, why did Jess hurt your mom? <sighs> he was always tired of her. She always, she always did drugs, and she told her, like, ignore me. Like, once she hit me, and she was just, <sighs> she was done. He did all he could to blame this on Jeff in the end, attempting to get as much sympathy as possible from the operator. I'm, I am so scared. I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to kill her. 
I hate Jeff so much. <laughs> he's he he's gonna make me die in prison. <laughs> Couldn't have taken somebody else. No, it took me. It took me to be a stupid person. The operator still didn't completely understand what he was getting at, so he attempted to explain until the police finally showed up and restrained him. You said Jeff did it. There's yeah. Jeff there. Is he still there with you? Well, well, yeah, he. Yeah. Yeah, he's always in. He's always inside me. He always talks to me. He. Well, here, yeah, yeah, here they are. Donovan? You okay? Anybody else here? Oh, no. Keep breathing. Okay. Okay. Your back. Okay. Don't move. After the call ended, the police quickly threw Donovan into cuffs and took him away. They found Heidi dead on the floor with 60 stab wounds and one final gunshot wound to the head. Donovan, all the way, asserted that he was not the one to blame. Heidi's two children, who were raised alongside Donovan for much of their lives, were left in disbelief. Shane, as well, was completely dumbfounded as he heard the news. Nobody expected anything even near this level to ever happen in their home. Alyssa described Heidi as being the ideal grandmother to her kids, and also as her own best friend. She told the news media, For my sanity, I would like to think there is something truly wrong with Donovan for him to do something so horrific. Heidi's son, Todd, was much more skeptical about whether or not Donovan really did have some sort of different personality in his head. More than that, he wrestled with the brutality of the attack himself. The Champaign County Juvenile Court transferred Donovan's case to an adult court at the suggestion of a prosecutor. By Ohio law, the court is allowed to transfer a child to an adult court if they are both at least 14 years old and there is no expectation that the child can be rehabilitated. This applies in cases such as these, instances of extreme violence. They're even more likely to be transferred if they are deemed to be a danger to the public. In 2018, Donovan, now 16 years old, was all set to go on trial for the murder of the woman he called Mom. While on trial in Champaign County Common Pleas Court, he continued to adamantly claim that Jeff the Killer, not him, was completely responsible for the murder. He even attempted to plead not guilty by reason of insanity, but the court found him mentally competent to stand trial. The Champaign County prosecutor, Kevin Tellaby, completely disputed Donovan's claims of having an alternate personality, saying it was merely an excuse for his vicious crime. Psychologists did indeed find Donovan to be legally sane. While Donovan's lawyer, Timothy Hackett, claimed that he suffered from dissociative identity disorder, some psychologists did not agree. It seemed to them that Donovan's idea of DID was mainly based on horror movies. Rather than showing actual symptoms of the disorder, he more or less acted the part as it would appear on TV. Donovan's lawyer noted that some psychologists did state that he struggled with depression and self-harm, possibly giving credence to his claims of more severe mental illness. Before there was any official diagnosis, the lawyer stated, It's got feathers, it flies. You don't really have to identify the bird to know that it's a bird. I think it was abundantly clear that one, he was severely mentally ill, um, and two, that that illness was consistent with dissociative identity disorder. The court ordered a doctor named Daniel Rinko to conduct an evaluation of Donovan's mental state. The doctor concluded that he would be perfectly fine to receive treatment within the juvenile system, saying that it would be incredibly rare for someone at his age to have dissociative identity disorder, noting that those with the disorder rarely show violence, especially at this level, as a symptom. He also acknowledged that Donovan posed a significant risk to the community based on what he had done, noting that he himself expressed that the Jeff character had ongoing violent impulses and wanted to kill more people than just Heidi. In the end, Dr. Rinko did diagnose Donovan with DID regardless, but he noted that he believed he could be rehabilitated, saying that the decision to deem him as beyond rehabilitation was based on unsupported findings. Donovan's lawyer would have preferred that Donovan be given some sort of mental health treatment rather than end up in jail, saying, There is an important societal issue as to what age do we give up on children for their rehabilitation prospects and what age do we not. 
The jury didn't even deliberate for a full three hours before finding Donovan guilty of the murder. Just a few days after his 16th birthday, he was convicted as an adult of aggravated murder. He was sentenced to life in prison, only being eligible for parole after 28 years. It was explained that three years had been tacked onto the sentence for a specific firearm violation in relation to the case. Nicholas was given a short opportunity to speak during his sentencing, during which he apologized and explained that there was neither a reason or an excuse for what he had done. He said, I do not care about myself as I do for my family. I do not care how long I am locked up for. The only thing that I want is what's best for my family. As he apologized again and again, he expressed his intent to receive mental health treatment, still insisting that Jeff the Killer lived in his mind. According to his family, this was all in line with what he had been saying during visitation. Heidi's son, Todd, recalled these meetings, saying, How do you know it's sincere, though? Anybody can say sorry. Despite the apologies, Donovan and his lawyer expressed their intentions to appeal the case, causing it to continue over into the next year. Over the next few years, the debate over whether Donovan's case should have been transferred to an adult court or not became a huge problem. It came to the point where a vote was going to be held to see whether or not they should overturn the decision. Three judges voted against reversing the decision, saying that they didn't abuse their power when transferring Donovan to an adult court. Four other judges, however, voted to reverse the decision. It was said Donovan was a juvenile after all. They based this decision on the psychologist's findings that Donovan was indeed capable of rehabilitation. In 2020, Donovan worked harder to appeal his conviction. His attorneys used this reversal to their advantage, saying that it was never proven that he couldn't be treated in the juvenile court system. His lawyer, Timothy Hackett, said, He was wearing a glow-in-the-dark dragon t-shirt on the day of the offense in this case. This was a child by any measure. Instead of receiving age-specific treatment for serious, severe mental health issues, he is now at Ross Correctional. Fast forward to 2022. Donovan is now 20 years old, sitting in jail, awaiting to see whether or not his appeal succeeds or he ends up rotting away in jail for the rest of his life. He was told that his case would be going back to the Champaign County's juvenile court. This was very good news for his case. On June 16th, Donovan entered a plea with the Champaign County Juvenile Court Judge, Brett Gilbert. He pleaded guilty to aggravated murder with a serious youth offender specification. As a result, the gun charges were dropped. Donovan told the judge that he had never attempted to seek mental health care as a kid because he feared he would get in trouble if he confided in anyone. He said, When I was 14, I was not in my right mind. I believed I was truly alone. I realized looking back, I was so wrong. I had the most loving family. It was my fault for not believing them. My mind started breaking down. I felt so broken. I want to properly apologize to my family. I realize now how much they loved me. I was wrapped up in my own self-pity. All my fears and doubts went away after therapy. When I found God, I opened up as a person. I have learned to trust people. I can't express how different I am today. I hope I can do what I can to ease my family's pain. Donovan then expressed an interest to have his own family one day, a statement that shook the prosecution. The assistant prosecutor reminded the judge that this murder was, in her own words, heinous. Two members of Heidi's family appeared at the hearing, remaining completely silent. They provided a written statement, read by the prosecution, stating that they didn't agree with the court's decision, saying that they still continue to suffer. I don't see how a person can come back from that and be a good person. So, if he if he does and he, he gets a little piece of paper saying he's rehabilitated or however that works, as far as I'm concerned, that it's just stuff to start a fire. It means nothing to me. The judge spoke to the victim's family directly, lamenting that there was only so much the juvenile court could do now that Donovan was about to turn 21. At that point, they couldn't give him any sort of sentence. Since he wasn't given this retrial until this late, it effectively resulted in a loophole where no court could actually prosecute him anymore. He told the family, I am sorry for the court process. I can't bring Heidi back. This is the most violent, horrific offense I've ever seen. Speaking to Donovan, he said, You get to live. She doesn't get to do that. That's something you'll have to live with every day. A plea to adjust the sentence was accepted. Now, the juvenile court was all set to sentence Donovan for his crime. 
After hearing statements from both Donovan's lawyer and the prosecution, the judge imposed a suspended sentence of 25 years to life. This meant that if Donovan violated any terms of his plea agreement, he would be serving that sentence. But he was free. After being pushed from court to court for years, entering all sorts of legal shenanigans and loopholes, and being utterly confused about his future, he was ready to walk free again. You think you're going to get justice for your family and your mom, and then guess who gets to walk away? I feel that it is a misjustice. Um, and and the, I'm appalled. The court was only going to be able to give Donovan so much help when it came to transitioning back into normal society. They could only do so up until his 21st birthday, and it was quickly coming up. The prosecution was very concerned that Donovan may kill again, as moving forward, there was no way to guarantee he would continue seeking mental help. Donovan was taken from the youth correctional facility he was housed in and sent to the Department of Youth Services in order to give him at least a small bit of transition before his 21st birthday. They hoped that he would at least nail the fundamentals of being a functioning member of society by then. On July 9th, Donovan turned 21 years old. The juvenile court no longer had any sort of jurisdiction over him. He was completely free. Legally, nothing was holding him back any longer. He has absolutely no restrictions on his life or his freedom. Donovan's father, Shane, came to pick him up from the youth facility. Heidi's son, Todd, was riding along in the passenger seat. Donovan hopped into the back seat. The ride in the car was long, quiet, and awkward. Todd glanced back at Donovan in the rearview mirror, seeing the man who murdered his mother sitting there, free and blissful. Todd had no idea what to say to him, but eventually he spoke his mind. He was in the back with a box of his stuff from prison. It was very quiet. He didn't, didn't say a word. I looked at him in my rearview mirror, and I was like, if I hear your name in any negative way, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, because I don't exactly know, but just know I don't want to hear your name, unless it's for getting Citizen of the Year. He told me he understood. He assured me that he's going to keep going to counseling, he's going to keep seeing doctors and stuff, and slowly try to get his life together, and he says he hopes one day that we can put this behind us. And then he started crying, I was like, I took, it's like, it'll never happen. It's like, I'm sorry. As much as I love you and as much as I care about you, it's never going to happen. Shane and Donovan have declined any sort of interview ever since. As of the writing of this story, they have only spoken out once, stating that Donovan continues to get mental health care. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I always keep linked down in the description below, where you can see videos early, ad-free, and uncensored. As of a few weeks ago, channel memberships are back up, and you can get the same benefits on there as well. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.